Hi, Stephen here again. Guess what? I got a question for you. <laughs> what percentage of our population are wealthy? I bet you know the answer, don't you? 1%. So let me ask you this. How long has that statistic been prevalent, you know? Since records began. So let me ask you this. If over the last 100 years, that 1% have not only been able to maintain their wealth, they've actually increased it. So just to give you a, a, a statistic, in 1984, the combined net worth of the 1% was $8 trillion. Today, it's almost $40 trillion. So over the last 100 years, as they've not only built that wealth, but expanded on it, have all the markets, stocks, real estate, have they at any time gone up in value? Of course, the answer is yes. Have they at some time gone down in value? As we know all too recently, yes. And have they at certain times been flat? And the answer, of course, again, is yes. So what do we learn from that? We learn that 1% of our population have learned how to make money regardless of what is going on in the economy. Now, is that because they're born genetically different than everybody else? Obviously not. Is it then because they're using a certain set of principles that when applied, create a specific result? Is that possible? And of course the answer is yes. So what we've been taught to believe is that you gotta work hard to make money. As Dr. Phil would say, how's that working for you so far? My perception is that you've been working hard all your life. You've played by the rules. You've done everything you were told and perhaps you haven't got the results that you were told you would get if you did. And the reality is wealthy people have a whole different set of beliefs and they use very different principles to get the results that they experience in their lives. I mean, let, let me put it to you this way. Do wealthy people send their children to different schools? Yeah, and, and why is that? It's because of the school lunches, right? It's because they're teaching them a different set of principles to prepare them for a different life. And if you were to learn the same principles, could you create the same results? And the answer, of course, is yes. And what would that mean to you? For you to be able to leave that knowledge for your children that they could then pass on to your children's children and that they learned instead of to go and work for money, but how to make money work for you. It's kind of an interesting concept, isn't it? Because we've all been told we've got to go work for money. And if you're going to make money, what do you have to have first? Money. So what I'm sharing with you is that that isn't true. That those ideas, those beliefs have been passed down from generation to generation so that the masses would go to work in factories and offices so the wealthy could become wealthier. So that they could leverage other people's time, other people's money, so they could grow their wealth. So if you use the same principle, if you began to leverage yourself by using other people's time, other people's money, and other people's resources, and that you realize that your greatest asset outside of your health and your time is your knowledge. And the more you grow your knowledge, the more you learn the principles of wealth, the wealthier you will become. The more of an asset that you'll become for, to others. So think of this. The vast majority of the population of our country keep their money in the bank, don't they? So they put the money in the bank. So what they do in a sense is they give the money to the bank, don't they? How much money does the bank pay them for that? Well, if it's into, in a checking account, they don't pay them anything, do they? In fact, they charge you to take it out. And Take a wild guess at which institution throughout history, since its inception, has been successful. And of course the answer is the banks. So if we're gonna learn the principles of wealth, who or what do you need to become? The answer is the bank. Now, I don't mean put a sign over your front door, Bill and Mary's new bank, put your deposits here. I'm saying use the same principles the banks use in order to become wealthy. That way, you know that only will you be wealthy, but so will your children's children. But it's a different way of thinking, isn't it? It's instead of thinking, I've got to work harder to make more, 
you've got to be start thinking, I've got to do less in order to have more. And what does that really mean? It means you've got to stop doing all the work, stop trying to do everything yourself and allow other people to do it for you. What you've got to see and they've got to see is how both of you can benefit from the process. But if you learn how to take other people's money and invest it and give them a great return, will people give you their money? And the answer, of course, is yes, because people give the banks their money every day. What if you learn how to do that, but you give them 200, 300, 400% more than the bank could give them? Now, of course, there are specific rules and regulations that have to be abided by in order to do that. But I just want you to start thinking how you can start to get the education, the knowledge that will ultimately become your greatest asset. Because here's what I've learned. Businesses will come and go, but knowledge will always remain. And you can take that knowledge with you wherever you go. What does that give you? It gives you freedom. And what is it you truly want? You want the freedom to be able to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, any time you want. And what I want to tell you is that it's attainable. You've been led to believe probably most of your life that it isn't. That you've got to settle for a certain amount and you can only expect a certain amount of life. And what I want you to know is that you can do it too. In fact, becoming wealthy could well be a lot easier than what you've spent most of your life doing and working hard to do every day. Point in case, have you ever seen that television program, Undercover Boss? Have you seen that? And then you're sitting there looking at this person who's running a major company responsible for millions of dollars of revenue and they're trying to live in the real world as a, someone who's employed and they can't do it, they can't handle it, they can't figure it out. And you're sitting there wondering, how does this fool run a company? So I want you to realize it's a lot easier than you might have been led to believe. But I want you to start to think about that. Write your comments down below, your thoughts. I'll respond to you. I want to hear what you have to say about these concepts and these ideas, and let's continue this conversation going. But for right now, your dare is to start to consider how you can create more time in your life and where and from how you can create the knowledge of wealthy people. Have a mentor, someone's already creating the success that you want in your life. What do most people do? They ask their friends who are not getting the result. So have a mentor. Find someone that you believe in and someone who's creating the same results that you're getting and let them guide you through the process. And we can start that right here on this blog. So write your comments down below. I want to hear from you. Your dare for this week, again, is to start to think differently. Now, remember what I say? Socrates, learning is simply remembering. Take the time, just a little bit of time, to do these exercises because these exercises will give you an experience. And that's where wisdom is. What do the Greeks say? Sape ord, dare to be wise. So follow through on your dare this week. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Until then, sape ord. Mm -hmm.